Hi, my name is Remco de Boer um, and I work as an information architect for the PodiumKunst.net network organization. Um, let's move this to the slideshow. Yeah, thank you very much. That's probably better. And the clicker. Um, PodiumKunst.net, which literally translates to uh, performingarts.net, is a relatively new network organization in the Netherlands um, for the performing arts. And the vision that we have is uh, to enable the performing arts sector to share their digital collections and to stimulate reuse. So we formulated four goals for 2025. Uh, the network or originates in uh, 2021. Um, and the goals are that the podiumkunst.net network is the network for the performing arts sector, uh, where we engage with large, medium and small cultural performing arts institutions. And another goal is that our target audience, the target groups know where to find the collections of these different institutions and that they are inspired by them. And finally, we want the performing arts together with the heritage and design sectors to contribute to the Dutch national strategy on digital heritage. And for that, the program, the PodiumKunst.net program, builds on four pillars. First, we want to support the network and we want to help it grow. We want to bring parties together and initiate collaboration. Second, we want to develop shared services as part of an infrastructure that connects all these different uh, institutes uh, and, and their collection information. Third, we want to increase expertise, um, and we do that together with partners here in the Netherlands. Uh, and finally, we want to uh, stimulate creative reuse so that makers can make use of the information that is connected through this network and uh, disseminate it. In this presentation, I focus mainly on the second pillar, the development of shared services um, and the connection of uh, the different uh, uh, collection information from the different institutes. And the pillar for that connection, the basis for it, is metadata. Metadata that, if you look back in history, used to be pretty much closed, uh, only available for your own organization, your own employees, focused particularly on physical access. Um, so where can I find this book, this museum object, this CD? Um, and also if you look back at funding, it, that used also to be based on physical access. So if, if you were a museum, for example, your funding was based on the amount of physical visitors that you attracted. Uh, well, that has changed over the years. So basically with the arrival of the internet, what you see is that the, used, the, the what used to be closed data now is opened up, became available for sharing. So it's not only available for your own organization or your own employees. Um, um, because of more digitization, uh, you, you start to attract another audience. A presence on the internet means that people don't need to be at your site anymore to be able to engage with your organization. Nowadays, if you want to visit an archive, for example, you can just go on the internet and you can basically visit any archive anywhere in the world. You don't need to travel there anymore. Um, so that means that also funding changes. Funding is now not only based on physical access, but also on digital presence. And if you want to increase your digital presence, if you want to increase the use of your data, then it's key that you can be found. And in order to be found, the very first step is to open up your data. Make sure that it is published in whatever format. And if you do that, and if you are able to, to open your metadata and make sure that people can find it and can use it, you will be findable as an institute as well. But you will still be in isolation. It's your data, it's your collection, and there's no connection to any other collections that may have similar data that may be uh, linked to the information that you have. So in addition to opening up your data, something else is needed. You need to connect as well. 
how can your collection be found in connection to other collections? How can you extend your reach? One way of doing that is using the same terms. Make sure that the metadata that you use is synchronized. And the technique that you can use for that is linked open data. There are already many thesauri available, for example, the art and architecture thesaurus that are built upon linked open data uh, uh, foundations that are actually used nowadays to connect different uh, uh, data sources. What do I mean with connection? Here's an example. Uh, if you go to music and movement, this is actually a picture that you can find there. It's interactive. It's not interactive in my slides, but it's interactive on the side. What you see here is in the center, uh, this picture is focused on Louis Andriessen, uh, a Dutch composer and pianist, who you see here connected to all sorts of other things. I'm, I understand that's not readable, but if you were to zoom in, you would find other people connected to Louis Andriessen. Uh, Hendrik Andriessen, for example, his father, you would find different places in this picture connected to Louis Andriessen. Utrecht, The Hague, places where he was born, where he taught to his students. Uh, you would find thematic things here, topics such as jazz. Um, and this is all connected to this individual Louis Andriessen. But you can imagine that if you were to jump to one of these connected pieces of information, you would find other pieces of information connected as well. So you start building a network of pieces of information, things that are connected. And that particular type of connection is used in Van Gogh Worldwide as an example of one of the first platforms where this type of uh, uh, connection between different sources of information, musea all over the world uh, related to Van Gogh, are brought together in a single platform. That is the idea that we have with Polyprints.net as well. So we want to build these shared services to make this type of connection possible. And what do we run into then? How do we connect these collections? Well, you have to understand that there are many differences in content. If you look at the performing arts, we have theater, we have audio, we have sheet music, we have registered music. And these all have their own domain, their own way of expressing the data that they have available. So there are huge differences in metadata. Um, we want to open this metadata to the internet so that Google can find it, and we also want to link it. For that, we are building what we call a knowledge graph. A knowledge graph that connects all these different sources through a common ground. So what you see here on the bottom of this picture is all these diverse sources that we encounter in the performing arts. And then at the top, we have these services that we want to provide to the end users. In between is this knowledge graph that connects the sources, the heterogeneous sources that we have, and makes them available as one virtual connected uh, uh, database or collection of metadata. And this is the model that we use for that. I won't go into detail, but we, we, we decided to use uh, uh, standards that are already available, and we settled for uh, LRM RDA which uh, you see the uh, conceptual model here on screen, um, which is not necessarily the model that each of these individual institutes uses, uh, but it's primarily the, the, the model that we use for the knots graph. And then we have uh, the recommendation.
Let's continue. What is enough? Um, so, because you don't know all the uh, ways that people want to use the metadata that you publish, um, it's very important that you are as elaborate as possible when describing your content. You cannot envision all the different questions that will be asked about the collections that you that as the focal point to, uh, to, to describe uh, the, the metadata. And publish that as linked open data. Because the linking of the different pieces of data is essential to be able to find everything that is related to a particular topic. For example, the Beyond Listen, who may occur in many archives, in many collections, and has published uh, many materials that will be distributed over different institutions. Um, you need to use standardized terms, um, because if you want to be able to connect collections, you need to synchronize the way that you uh, apply metadata. And uh, there's a perfect example of that here in the Netherlands, which is called the NDE Term Network. The NDE stands for Dutch National Digital Heritage Network, um, where different terminology sources are connected. Um, and um, Okay, I'm, I'm a bit distracted by my own voice running a, bit of, a, a minute behind, I'm sorry about that. Um, so what, 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 let's go back to the NDE network. What you see here is that there are different terminology sources connected to a single portal where you can search for the metadata terms that you need and you can be sure that they are reusable, it can be used by others as well. Um, you also want to publish your data sets in an open way. Um, again, here, if you look at what, how that's organized in the Netherlands, there is an archive, a National Archive Data Register, stemming from NDE as well, where your data set can be registered so that it can be found. But you should also make sure that Google can find it. How to get there? Well, it's imperative that you involve the experts. Let the experts help you. They are the guards of the standards. They know. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I wonder if we have any questions to start today. You have one? Lovely. Yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Mike Marikrink. I work at the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. Um, thanks for this nice presentation. I was wondering about um, where you see the responsibility Um, uh, boundary line, if you see what I mean. Thank you, yeah. Um, so, if you look at the, the, the Dutch National Strategy on Digital Heritage, uh, which podiumkunst.net is, is an example of uh, how, how we want to fulfill them, the idea is that uh, it's as distributed as possible. So you want to leave as much of the data and as much of the uh, uh, publication of the metadata with the individual organization. Now, in practice, what you see is that there are a lot of uh, differences between these organizations. We have small organizations, we have huge organizations such as Sound and Vision. Um, and, and you can imagine that the capabilities of each of these organizations is different. Um, so it's also a matter of helping the smaller organizations to be able to connect to this network. And that means that in terms of the services that we design, there are some services really particularly targeted towards these smaller institutes uh, to help them, for example, to open up their data and to 
to, to, to transform it into linked open data because you, that's not sort of a capability that you can expect for each and every institute. Um, so, in essence, the, um, uh, the responsibilities lie with the uh, owners of the sources, the institutes themselves. Uh, the goal of the network is to help them uh, to, to, to uh, fulfill these responsibilities um, and to support them wherever necessary. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Hi, uh, Steve Lum, uh, Microska VLC. Uh, you mentioned uh, discover discoverability, uh, like you made the example of Google. Uh, how do you get, uh, how do you make sure that Google finds your information, especially since the algorithm is uh, unknown? And it's a huge business to get your research on top. And would it, it make sense to have like a you mentioned other big organization all working together on that field. Would it make, would it make sense to have a, like a joint effort to have your own global uh, search engine for art and things like that, rather than relying just on Google for this? So how do you make Google find and, and, and understand the data that you publish? There are um, standards for that as well. So a particular standard is schema.org, and if you are able to, to codify your metadata using that standard, uh, then Google will find it and can interpret it. So it can, uh, if you go to Google, sometimes you search for something and you see these little information boxes pop up, uh, about persons, for example. Um, that's extracted by Google from semantically annotated data, and uh, using that type of technology, in coordination with the model that you use to find the data, if you really want to search for it in terms of uh, the performing arts domain. Um, so if you, if you transform it to schema, of course, you lose some information. Um, but um, it's sort of an alternative publication that helps you to make the data understandable by Google as well. So there are these kinds of, uh, uh, of approaches that you can use for that. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for on time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.